The Honorable Leader of the New Democratic Party. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday, in question period, the Minister of Community Services uh, provided the House what she called a, a friendly reminder that she had been mandated by the Premier to fight poverty. Now, I would like to provide the government a friendly reminder that today in Nova Scotia, a single parent with one child on receiving social assistance receives the single lowest income assistance payments that are payable anywhere in our country. This was true the moment the mandate letter was written, and it will be true the moment that this budget is passed, because this is a budget that does not increase income assistance in Nova Scotia by a single is there a cent. Question? So I want to ask the Premier to explain why he finds it acceptable that Nova Scotia families receiving social assistance should be left to be the poorest in the country. The Honourable Premier. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and, and that's why like, these are the types of issues that are so important to Nova Scotia and so important to us. That's why we put forward such a, a compassionate uh, budget yesterday. Is there more work to do? Yes, there's more work to do. But we're getting to work on things like the, 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 child, the child benefits, rental supports. You know, look, Mr. Speaker, the member can pretend that nothing is being done in support of these Nova Scotians, but it would only be pretending, because it's not true, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. Mr. Speaker, the Premier refers to this budget as, to use his word, compassionate. I don't think, however, that it qualifies as compassionate to have a budget that leaves a single income assistance recipient uh, receiving a total annual income of $7,920 in the midst of a 5.7% inflation environment, which is going to knock $400 off of that in the course of the next budget year. So I want to ask the Premier, why, if they were so compassionate in this government, did they not have enough compassion simply to index income assistance to inflation? Yes. The Honourable Premier. Well, th thank you, Mr. Speaker. And look, no, nobody on this side of the House will deny uh, issues facing Nova Scotians. We'll let that for the two prior governments before us, three prior governments. They've ignored the issues. We won't ignore the issues. We're getting to work on this side of the House. We are very clear with Nova Scotians uh, in the summer campaign. We're very focused on health care. Nova Scotians seen that focus come through in everything we've done. We'll do more. There's more work to do. There's always more work to do. But we're committed to doing it, Mr. Speaker, and we will always fulfill the commitments we made to Nova Scotians. And that's what this budget started on yesterday. The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party on his final supplementary. Mr. Speaker, uh, when the previous Premier came into office, the first budget that his government brought forward incorporated a $100 a month right. increase in income assistance. And, and, and when the current government of British Columbia came into power, their very first budget included a hundred dollars a month increase in income assistance. That is because this was a matter that was a priority to both of those governments. This government, however, in the midst of a 30-year high in the cost of living, has brought forward a budget that doesn't increase income assistance whatsoever. Uh, will the Premier explain then, simply, why is this matter not a priority for him? The Honourable Premier. There's lots of priorities. There's lots of priorities for the government, Mr. Speaker. There's only so much we can do, but we do as much as we can with what we have. We're very focused on fulfilling the commitments we made to Nova Scotians. And Mr. Speaker, Nova Scotians are seeing that. 